So Gregory, thanks for asking something that I bet a lot of you are, well, some of you are probably thinking about, which is when you start encountering my <laughs> programs and stuff, especially those of you who happen to be in Master Heart, um, you know, in Master Heart, for example, you get everything that I do. I mean, there's, I wanted an offering. I'm like, I don't, with this group of people, they get everything. I don't have to like think about, oh, you get a discount on this or whatever. No, you just get everything, which of course means that because you get everything, there can be a sense of overwhelm. Like what? George is launching another, <laughs> another thing. Here's an, and yet here's another area of business I'm supposed to think about. Uh, I'm just still thinking about the other five that, <laughs> that I took in the last five months. Now there's a sixth one or an eighth one or a 12th one. Like, like, yeah. So every single course that I teach, it's, it's like another area of habit creation that the student needs to, to consider. It can't, it can't just be, well, it can either just be a course you consume and go, well, that was interesting and file it away for the future, which, you know, I think is legitimate in some ways. Some people, for example, who are taking my SEO class go, okay, well, so now I know, now I actually know what SEO is all about. And I'm going to be a little bit more cognizant going forward as I do these things, but I'm not going to like carve out an hour a week or whatever. It's just something that I'm kind of aware, I'm more aware of. And I, and I think that's okay. Or someone else who might take, um, you know, my LinkedIn class might say, okay, I'm not going to carve out a whole hour a week for LinkedIn, but when I do go to LinkedIn and do something, I'll be more aware of what the features are and how to best use them. So like there's one air, one aspect of or one, one uh, method mode of learning where it's like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm more aware of this. And in my regular activities, I might do things a bit more effectively. But the other way of learning, which is kind of the way I'm assuming everyone's learning in my courses is, all right, now that you're learning SEO, now you're going to carve out, you know, an hour every two weeks or whatever to like do these SEO checklist items or something like that. And when you're first kind of getting your business habits in order, it's not reasonable to assume that if you take a class from me every month or two or three or four, that you're going to add another hour or two to your week ongoingly, right? Because now, now you, you know, so I think comes back, Gregory, to what your question is, how do you prioritize which classes to take as a FYI? Okay, that's interesting for the future. I might do something about it versus, okay, this is a class I'm actually going to like carve out time on a weekly basis for. Okay. So basically, um, I, you can, my recommendation is to follow, you know, my eight practices of authentic business. That's been set up in a way that is kind of a, well, not kind of, it, it, it does make sense to take it step by step. So if you go to Google and Google eight practices of authentic business, gratefully, Mine is at the top and you'll help my SEO out by clicking on it. <laughs> okay. And um, yeah, so this is it. Like, like if I were to, <laughs> if I had the privilege of shaping you from the womb, <laughs> my child. <laughs> yes, dad. Welcome, welcome to life. <laughs> well, welcome to life, new, oh, new business owner. And um, here, here's your first step. Here's first grade. First grade is joyful productivity. You know, it's kind of like, okay, you're gonna just like, what do I do? Well, you learn joyful productivity, you start activating some of these things in, into your week. And then uh, the next uh, second grade would be healthy money habits. Uh, some of you um, are already okay about that. Some of you <laughs> maybe feel some avoidance with that. Um, that's okay. Uh, this one is a relatively new one that I put in here. So if you want to skip this one for now, it's okay. Um, and then you can move on to third grade <laughs> or, you know, or fourth grade or fifth grade by this point, which is authentic content creation. So it's like, 
all right, before you have an authentic business, you have to have people who are going to buy something from you. Before you have people who are going to buy something from you, they need to know, like, and trust you. Well, what's the simplest way of getting that done? Or authentic content creation um, and authentic paid content distribution. So I feel like if you don't have that going on a regular basis, it's hard to do the rest. How are you going to distribute content in a paid way when you don't even have a regular rhythm of it? How are you going to do collaborations when people can't look at your profile and don't, don't see what kind of content you're making and you, don't have, you, don't, you haven't tested enough ideas to know, well, if someone interviews me, I know that I've posted 50 things and out of the 50 things, these five things made the most positive influence on people. So those are the five things I'm going to talk about when someone interviews me with a collaboration. So it's all in this order, right? Content creation allows you to then do paid content distribution, which builds you an audience so that collaborations make sense. Why would I trade interviews with you if you have zero audience? And how do you get an audience? Well, you do paid content distribution so that people who are just randomly surfing Facebook or Instagram, for example, start to see Gregory Vahanian's videos, Gregory Vahanian's posts. Like, who is this guy? He has a really good point whenever, whenever he talks about the transformation of consciousness or when he talks about forgiveness or when he talks about the sacred masculine. Wow, you know, I didn't think about that. Now I'm going to start following him. Following him means, ah, now I have an audience, Gregory says. Now I can do collaborations to grow that audience a lot. Okay, paid content distribution kind of is an ongoing thing to keep growing your audience. But collaborations is a great way to target build, target grow your audience. Now that you have an audience, you do audience research. <laughs> you talk to them, says, George, you're in my audience. And uh, what have you purchased in regards to the sacred masculine or just personal growth, you know, that kind of stuff. So audience research then gives you the ideas or the confirmation to sell something useful, to sell something relevant to them, which brings you over to the Rhythm of Gentle launches. And if you're doing Rhythm of Gentle launches, now you're, now you're getting clients and you're getting students on a regular basis, make, you know, growing your client base. And therefore, the last thing is to focus on the mastery of your craft, which is so ironic because most, many of you focus on this first for years, right? It's like, I have no clients, so I'm just going to take more courses to, <laughs> to get better at my craft, which is great. It's, it's actually a hobby of yours, which is wonderful, and you should do that. At the same time, I put this last, not that you should not master your craft in the beginning. I put this last so that you're aware of the priorities of actually growing a business in that you're going to be doing mastery of your craft anyway. I don't have to tell you to do it. You're already passionate about what you do. That's already happening. You're already reading books, taking programs, getting a coach. You're, you're already getting good at your stuff. You're already you know, working with your friends, clients, whatever. So the mastery of your craft, basically, the last one is like, well, now let me tell you how I recommend getting better at your craft. So for me, of course, I'm, I'm like feedback and marketing driven. So I'm like all about, okay, now let's have a regular rhythm of getting feedback from your clients, from your students, and how do we implement that feedback in a way that becomes habits, better habits for you. But anyway, Gregory, is that helpful? Let me know if that, yeah. Yes, that's, that's very helpful. It's, it's calming to the place Good. inside of me that can get a little anxious, like I, yes. where, where to place my focus. Yes. Uh, and, I, and if I can add one thing to sure. it, sure. Um, it doesn't elude, uh, it makes perfect sense, the order that you've uh, placed it in. Um, and it also doesn't elude me that uh, the mastery of craft, uh, while that can take on many different right. uh, yes. looks, yes. Part, part of the mastery of crafts goes back to, I think it was number three, which is the content creation. Sure. That in through yes. the content creation, the exactly. You're, you are mastering the and, knowledge. Yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah. And so, you know, back to the question that you posed, a very good one is like, well, George, should I take your next class, whatever next class you're launching? Well, 
maybe you should go back, if, if any of you who are asking that, maybe you should go back to this and go, well, is the next, where am I right now in this whole scheme of things? Am I, am I here? Or have I got that, you know, pretty good, pretty well down, and now I'm going to move on to here? Or have I got that pretty well down, or I want to skip this for now, now let's move on to here? Well, if I'm here, then is George's next class going to help me with this? And if the answer is no, George's next class helps me with something further along, skip my next class. I don't want to miss your next class. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then, if you don't want to miss my next no, I'm glad. Thank you. And, of course, I'm grateful for, for your engagement in my next class. But, but if you don't want to miss my next class, and if you have time carved out to attend my classes, then your mode in taking my next class is an FYI mode. Remember, I said there's two modes. There's the, okay, habituation, implementation, you know, mode. And then there's yes. the FYI mode. And you could do my classes in FYI mode just knowing that you don't have to give yourself so much pressure in doing all the homework for my next class if you're Thank not you. yet there. Does that make yeah, sense? That, that's very helpful yeah. because there is the place inside of me right. in some of the classes, like the SEO yeah. class, for yeah. example, yeah. where you're there's gonna... a part of me reprimanding myself from not implementing. <laughs> and then I have to right. remind myself, but you're not there. There's you're not nothing there. to implement. You, you're... This is an FYI <laughs> mode right now, which, yeah. which is really, yeah. I'm, and thank you for letting me clarify this because I, I really, yeah, this is really, this is good. So thank, thank you, Gregory. You. I appreciate it. Thank you.